Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Let's get right into information today. So just to breeze over some news that was recent and also tying together some additional news that was in the past January 2019, HSBC, again, a huge behemoth, a huge bank I've said to keep an eye on, in particular them working with DLT and even potentially working with some groups and development banks in China. Again, none of this is financial advice. We are just connecting dots. Always do your own research. Time will tell. So HSBC, a RippleNet partner, we know Marcus Treacher of Ripple has had a long history with not only HSBC, but also with Swift. So again, back in 2019 of January, HSBC settles $250 billion of foreign exchange transactions using DLT. Now, this type of, let's see, this platform, again, we can see they're just using this HSBC FX everywhere. It's been used for the past years to orchestrate payments across HSBC's internal balance sheets, okay, creating significant efficiencies and opportunities. And again, it's not crazy to think that they have even tested with the XRP ledger, of course, their RippleNet partner. And yeah, they can send $250 billion of transactions internally specifically utilizing IOUs, all right? It does not have to be XRP right now. They can run various, various experiments. We know some of the biggest central banks have already tested the XRP ledger. So should not be surprised, should not be hype. And that $250 billion did not go through XRP. Obviously at current price, that would not, there's not enough liquidity in the ecosystem. It would absolutely push the price up. There would be a lot of slippage, um, a lot of costs and right now it does not make sense unless there was some type of mass enablement approach and again time will tell so just for dlt whether it's corda or any other groups key benefits include singularity transparency immutability again you guys can read this as well we understand this everyone has a copy of trade i think that obviously dlt will be huge for accounting but it's going to go way beyond that for supply chain tracking inventory etc right payments orchestration you can see confirmation and settlements automated by matching and netting transactions reducing costs reliance on external settlement networks absolutely having control of your own platform as well again mutual trust balance sheet optimization which is going to be huge and we know with recent news with moneygram you know kind of getting away again from internally tre internal treasury usage why all right is ripple finally pushing them to use XRP for a more peer to peer approach and hopefully scale that as well. Because we saw that on demand liquidity actually, uh, the volume started going up again recently as well. So, balance sheet optimization, consolidated global view of forward cash flows, uncertainty of funds throughout the funding cycle supports greater balance sheet optimization. All right, and you guys can read again about this, just talking global cross border nature, conducting thousands of foreign exchange transactions, absolutely having to do directly with, of course, cross border trade finance, you name it, all right? So again, the efficiencies of these internal flows. So just remember that we have huge groups doing this for years now, should be no surprise, you can kind of talk about the Global Payment Steering Group, RippleNet, people are leading that in the initiatives and the banks behind that as well. They're not only teaming up with Ripple, there's many, many groups. I'm just saying, in my opinion, based off the dot connecting and research I've done, I do see Ripple being, with XRP of course, a key player in this space. I'm not going to speculate on price. You understand that I believe that if we see what we want to see, all prices of cryptocurrencies with real you know, utility will be orders of magnitudes higher. So what I want to emphasize really quick before we go over additional news is this. So I just want to talk about a few laws. We've talked about them on the channel before, but again, for distributed ledger technology networks that we know of today, whether it's the XRP ledger or even just like, you know, networks themselves like RippleNet or JP Morgan, like any of these groups with nodes, partners, etc. Okay. So for example, Moore's law is the observation that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles about every two years. All right. If you look at the amount of steps it takes to double to get a preposterously large number, you'll know that it only takes 20 steps to go from the number one to one million if you double it every time. As you can see here, one to one million, guys, about 20 steps. And again, another 10 steps after that is, you know, it goes to uh, a billion. Or maybe I'm trying to think if you go. So if you go from 1,000 to 1 million, that is about 10 steps. If you go from 1 million, and another 10 steps, it's just over 1 billion as well. Things to note. Now, with Metcalf's law that states the effect of a telecommunications network is proportional to the square of the number of connected users of the system. Again, just like network effects, Brad Garlinghouse has talked about this. You can kind of pretend, you know, Facebook became more valid, not pretend, but use Facebook for an example, or even the telephone, all right? 
So right here, every new node, now think of not only a node for EVX or P Ledger and validators, think of even RippleNet partners signing on and using the technology, or potentially even a holder of XRP, specifically one that is of course transacting on a daily basis at an institutional level, because we are just, you know, obviously retail investors, hopefully providing a little organic liquidity, maybe increasing demand, we're not owed anything, all right? This is gonna be a new technology, it has been, and it's being tested for quite some time. I wanna go over a brief timeline as well, and just understand, guys, banks are not going to adopt something that was around for one year, and just boom, level playing field, adopt. They need years and years of proof of concepts, something like the XRP ledger that has successfully closed 55 million plus ledgers without a single error rate, never an issue of double spending, nothing like that, all right? Well, and we'll, talk, we'll even talk about this and show on the XRP ledger, there's tons of FUD. Again, XRP being the native token saying XRP can be frozen. No one will ever use that. That's a joke. The native token XRP cannot be frozen on the XRP ledger. It is only IOUs. Just like if HSBC with that experimentation utilize that, that is, it's again, an obligation, a legal obligation, things of this nature. All right. So right here, this is what's really interesting. Just keep your mind open. So again, Metcalf's law. The state or uh, states the effective telecommunications network is proportional to the square of the number of connected users of the system. So it's just like Moore's law, but of connectivity. So every node that is added to the network does not just increase the value of the network by one, guys. This curve is much steeper and becomes much steeper than that. This is an auto catalytic reaction. Again, a flywheel, a self fulfilling type of growth. And again, exponential growth, they say, is one of the eighth wonders of the world. So think of RippleNet, XRP Ledger, Corda. You can think of DLT systems. You can think of a network. You can think of a team. It doesn't matter. Three users gets three connections. 10 users gets 45 pairs. And 100 users gets 5,000, roughly. Right, so what does this mean for the growth of these ecosystems? With anything, you can apply this to everything. Well, it gathers momentum as it grows, and as the number increases, the usefulness of the network increases, making it more compelling to join the network over time. Now, obviously, this has even bigger snowball effects with the liquidity of XRP, as it's more liquid and there's higher volume. Of course, the price can go up, provided there's higher transactions pushing, pushing that within the order books. And then there's less slippage for customers, so they'll be able to send larger and larger transactions. And guess what that does? Appreciates the price of XRP. What does that do? Makes XRP more liquid as well. It's a never-ending flywheel effect. All right, I did watch a recent video that uh, Susie Esoteric Trading Solutions, again, she's a financial advisor in Australia, and she's had years of experience, and I, I get her frustration as well. People that have been holding XRP for two to three years are giving up, and, you know, I, I don't really care. I'm, you know, it's up to them, but I know what's coming, and I'm willing to hold, and I've only invested what I can afford to lose, and that's what I've always advocated on this channel. I encourage people to do their own research, do what's right for you, do what's right for your mental health. But in the scheme of things, she went over and went through Amazon, Apple, like these companies, you know, like Amazon stock was not $2,000 per stock early on. It took quite some time. And yes, I do think it has been quite some time and technology will adopt faster than it ever has had specifically today. I'm just saying in the scheme of things, I think that we are at the very right time. My only concern is how early are we? And that's a good thing because that means the upside is that much higher. So again, do what's right for you guys. And again, none of this is financial advice. Just providing my thoughts, all right? I know I know nothing in the scheme of things, just like anybody. <clears throat> so right here, this is a really cool thing. I highly recommend you guys going to support this. This is on xrparcade.com. Again, the creator, Leonidas, created this awesome timeline of XRP Ripple, this whole history. I'm just gonna breeze through it and I want you guys to go read it. They have, he has links connecting to it. Oh, great explanation. And yes, he'll be, obviously it's incredibly hard to add every single point here. So again, he's giving good summaries and he's gonna continuously be updating this as well with the help of the XRP community. So again, 2004, dating back well before Bitcoin, guys. We had, <clears throat> we had Ripple Pay, excuse me. I'm talking fast, so I'm gonna have to drink some water with uh, Ryan Fugger again, who developed this first prototype of Ripple, and it was more of just a decentralized digital monetary system, even pre-Bitcoin. Really, really interesting. Of course, we have even with OpenCoin in 2012. Let me get a sip of water. All right, you can speed through this. They talk about angel investing, funding rounds. They talk about various lawsuits. Um, obviously, Jed McCaleb leaving Ripple, Ripple Labs opening in 2013, changing their name, distribution legal penalties, funding, 
Ripple, simplified his name to Ripple, Interledger Protocol, remember all of them with Mojulu, Piper Ledger, gifting it to the W3C that literally develops the standards for the internet, no big deal, all right? The formation of SBI Ripple Asia, and again, Adam Trademan, all right? Bit license, getting clarity, and again, Ben, ben Losky joining, of course, Ripple. We have people joining as board of directors, advisors, etc. high-tiered individuals that are not risking their reputation. We're talking 10 to, you know, 40 years in some cases, backing this company. Why? All right, Ripple Net Committee forming, and again, the Global Payments Steering Group, guys. Global Payments. Ripple focused on low value, all right? Looking at bigger players as well, but again, this is the stepping stone. They have the biggest interest, and they've said verbatim that our biggest interest is XRP appreciating as well, but they don't have to tell you anything. They don't have to express that. They are a private company working. Anybody that's criticizing Ripple, saying they're doing a bad job, you clearly have no idea how this works. They owe us nothing. I'm not wasting my time to badmouth any company or people that are actually working and contributing to making the world a better place. All right, R3 and Ripple, the lawsuit, remember, for $5 billion promised. You can speed through when they reached 100 customers in 2017, talked about the Spring Initiative, building other use cases around it instead of just cross-border payments, micropayments, streaming, decentralized you know, um, finance products like Logos Network Acquisition, really exciting. We have some retail investors trying to sue Ripple. Um, obviously, the University Blockchain Research Initiative, Different groups in you know Singapore, Australia running actual validators on the XRP ledger when Ripple controlled less than 50% of XRP's unique node list. All right, so there's different ways, of course. There's decentralization of physical supply, there's decentralization of governance. There's very different terms when you use this. All right, and they're doing what the internet did, a top-down approach. Starting off, yeah, relatively centralized in the scheme of things. But now, if you really want to make that argument, to me, and it's, I don't even believe it's biased, you can go through the math and control of, you know, actual mining farms, XRP, and you guys are going to laugh, in my opinion, in terms of at least governance specifically, is less centralized than Bitcoin, all right? Specifically, of course, a lot more, you know, scalable, we, we get the benefits. Anyways, Ripple and R3, when they settled that obligation for the 5 billion XRP, the terms are confidential. So did they settle for any XRP? If they even settled for 2.5 billion XRP, you could argue that R3 has a vested interest for XRP to appreciate, and that's why it has been the only digital asset name to settle via Corda. Now, is it something that's going to skyrocket the price instantaneously? Is it something they're going to use without a doubt? I can't tell you that with certainty. I'm just saying, I'm connecting the dots, things that make you go, hmm. All right, ODL, again, when XRapid, which it was called using XRP, was live in 2018 with like groups like uh, Mercury FX. All right. 200 plus customers, Ripple investing in MoneyGram in 2019 of June, 50 million ledgers successfully closed. Again, that's a big deal. No errors at all. We had the former CTO, Stephen Thomas, coding Bitcoin from scratch, and he's familiar with the XRP ledger. We don't have that same type of code. All right, patent infringement, 300 customers, Series C. I just highly recommend looking at all of this, guys. When Ripple joined, ISO 2022, their you know, global standards body, and becoming the first member focused on distributed ledger technology, working with Swift. I wonder why. Because they're a game changer, guys. They are an enabler. They're not trying to be a disruptor. All right? And RippleNet Cloud going live, and then PayID, which is huge. Now, in regards to PayID, guys, I did talk to the folks over at Unstoppable Domains a couple hours ago. Um, really, really enjoyed it. And again, guys, links will be in the top of the video description. Not trying to be salesy, but if you've not claimed like a domain yet, I recommend doing so if you plan to be a part of the cryptocurrency space in the future. You can link all cryptocurrency addresses to a single domain name, which will be very nice in the future. For example, mine is in the video description. It's kevincage.crypto. So interestingly enough, some are even doing what they did in the dot-com bubble. They're domain squatting and even selling. They're claiming, you know, domains they'll think that will be used in the future and selling their domain names for profits as well exciting times for sure uh, i just you know nonetheless i'd check it out when you get a chance links are in the video description all right let's keep going so we're going to talk about again tata so tcs huge group we know all of the researchers in this community have covered them extensively we've talked about quartz specifically a long time huge users on this network um, huge, uh, you know, conglomerate. We'll kind of go in depth and detail and just kind of spit through this. So Matthew L I N Y. So Saudi Ar Saudi Arabian uh, Banque Saudi France. So again, B S F. We'll just call them that. Has selected T C S banks to provide seamless and cont uh, contextual customer experiences with the digital core. Now they are Ripple Net enabled. Just so you do, just so you do know. We'll show you. I need another drink because I'm getting the hiccups. 
I've got a busy day, so I'm just trying to get this out because I know it's been a few. The global banking platform uses the Quartz blockchain solution that interoperates with R3 Corda. All right, so right here. We have BSF, we see, can see, as we see, selected TCS banks to provide seamless and contextual blah, blah, blah. All right, we'll see TCS banks, Tata Consultancy Services, massive behemoth of your newcomer. Please look into them, they're huge. Right here, the dev kit and other Quartz solutions. Quartz is massive, we'll show them briefly as well, to enable interoperability with other third-party solutions and blockchain networks. Currently, a blockchain app developed using Quartz can be deployed on Hyperledger Fabric, okay? There's various Hyperledger projects, if you must know, and yes, they have an incentivized, um, they're incentivized to utilize ILP, Interledger Protocol, which was created by Ripple. Hyperledger and Ripple are the two teams that basically work and are distributing it as well as possible, or at least to integrate and interoperate, I should say, with many, many platforms today. All right, we got Ethereum and R3's Corda, XRP enabled. While the actual development of the application is simplified with templates, additional coding can be done for integration with a specific blockchain platform. All right, we can see Quartz, Smart DLT Solutions, Banks, Industry Network, we can see. All right. Pretty obvious. All right. And then again, even right here, XRP researchers saying Tata connects to RippleNet via Quartz. Quartz Gateway connects the TCS Banks payment systems and then RTP solution is part of TCS Banks. All right. And then right here, we've shown this many times back from April 2019. Tata Consultancy Services adopts Ripple Tech. We can see they're based out of Mumbai or at least headquartered there. The clients include Citibank, UK, GE, Microsoft, etc. Now they do have direct quotes and they mention RippleNet. So here's a quote again. With the report, the Quartz cross-border remittance solution enables, bank, enables banks' payment systems to connect to newer distributed ledger technology-based payment infrastructures like RippleNet. Now, this was in an actual quote, just so you do know, for processing of cross-border foreign exchange remittance transactions, the specific use case that XRP is claimed to be built for. Other people do have beliefs and conspiracies that this cross-border market attack is more of just a distraction and they're actually going after the derivatives market i'll believe it when i see it anything is possible all right so the courts gateway connecting again as we can see to tcs banks so just understand they're a huge group guys deployed at more than 450 installations worldwide we can see tcs banks processes more than 1 billion accounts so relatively big talking again about the cloud we know that RippleNet cloud recently went live it is simply the future all right all right now again harry underscore the cool twin <laughs> cool name by the way part one to two essential questions by again cto of ripple david schwartz addressing this talking again what i already talked about with hsbc talking about yeah you can freeze ious issued on the xrp ledger and i kind of want to just listen to this now it is two minutes if you've already heard it fast forward to the end um but i highly recommend listening up well stay at one of the uh traditional exchanges bitstamp I think in 2014 or 2015, there was some kind of freeze function executed or whatever. And how does that work? And who decides uh, how that's executed? And just tell us about that. Thank you for that question. That's a great question. I'd love to explain that. So the XRP ledger has a freeze feature for assets other than XRP. So for example, you can represent legal obligations on the XRP ledger and you can trade them. So for example, if Bitstamp owes me one Bitcoin, I can trade that on the XRP ledger to someone else who can redeem it. Bitstamp treats that as a legal obligation. Now legal obligations can disappear because of things that happen off the ledger. In this case, there was a dispute over the ownership of some of those funds. And Bitstamp made the decision to freeze those funds on the ledger, which is what they should do. If they're not sure whether they owe me a Bitcoin or not, the ledger shouldn't reflect the fact that they owe me a Bitcoin. Now I just wanna add this has no effect on XRP and you can also create assets that don't reflect legal obligations. But that, that's what makes the decentralized exchange possible. Most digitized or collateralized fiat assets on the ledger are freezable by their issuer. So it's the issuer of that asset that can freeze it. So if you decide to accept dollars backed by, let's say, GitHub, GitHub can freeze those dollars, let's say, if the government like says that you can't withdraw them. So it's an actual legal obligation tradable on the ledger. Yes, it's strictly the issuer. And XRP isn't issued by anyone, so there's nobody who could freeze it. Uh, yeah, Dima was second, and yeah. David is third. My name is Daim. Uh, thank you for your speech. It was amazing, very interesting, and yeah, now I'm looking forward to buy some Ripple coins. But yeah. Please, XRP. Yeah. First of all, uh, I would like to ask uh, how the real coins were distributed initially, and how are they distributed now? Thank you. Thank you. So, 
Consensus cannot accomplish the initial, the initial distribution of a digital asset. Unlike mining, it is not, um, it's, it's cooperative, it's not aversive, it's not based on game theory incentives. So it doesn't have the ability to sort of pick winners. Um, the, way the, the way the XRP ledger works, all of the XRP that will ever exist existed in the Genesis ledger and was sort of open for anyone to take. Um, kind of ironically, and was sort of open for anyone to take. Um, kind of ironically, after we went live, there was still some XRP left in the Genesis ledger, and so people who discovered it could just sort of take it out of a, as a free pot. Uh, but what happened is the ori Jealous. original um, founders, the original um, creators of XRP, the people who started up the XRP ledger, divided the XRP so that some of it went to, was gifted to a company that eventually became Ripple, and some of it, they approximately 20%, they kept. A significant fraction of that 20% has been donated to charity. Um, a significant fraction of the 80% that was given to what's now OpenCoin is locked up on the ledger in escrow. Uh, those escrows release roughly a billion XRP every month, which Ripple uses to build the ecosystem um, and to fund itself. Um, and what happens at the end of each month is the unused XRP over that billion is put back into escrow, adding a new month. So originally there were 55 months of escrow. I think there are about three more months now. So that provides complete transparency on the token distribution. And every quarter we publish a sort of market summary explaining how we use the XRP that we use. So it's transparent, but we do, con we do control, uh, as it comes out of escrow, Ripple controls those, those funds. And that's the same thing with Jed McCaleb's amounts. All right. So... Or, I mean, at least Ripple has the escrow, right? So then Harry Part 3, again, I just like this quote. So again, David Schwartz, my use tissues are scarce. I can only sneeze a certain amount of times. It does not guarantee value. Great analogy. It's like using Napster when you have Spotify Premium. That's, again, one one-thousandth one of the cost. One just does it better. Innovate. Love that. All right, to finish things off, I do want to just give a shout out again to XRP underscore crow this is status his website is status.hr he has this cool little infographic here and as we can see if every man in the world has invested in xrp he would only have about 12.8 xrp now keep in mind with this he says approximately and we don't know exactly these stats i'm guessing it is just the uh, ledger or wallet amounts of 2.02 million people have invested into xrp i would like to see where this number came from Again, keep in mind that, you know, the typical XRP holder might have three or four exchanges. So those are four XRP wallets right there. You might have a tip bot. I mean, you know, the average holder might have four to five, you know, XRP wallets. Some might have 12, depending on, you know, how diversified you are in the space. So keep in mind, this number could be greatly smaller than that as well. And XRP, to my knowledge, is targeting, you know, enterprise grade, institutional, wholesale, interbank settlement so right here if every man has invested in xrp we would only have about 12.8 xrp you can see this explanation based off of a global population of about 7.8 billion people now for paypal and there's a user base of 310 million give or take there is only about 322 xrp available for every paypal user found that to be interesting guys stay positive again check the links in the video description with all things related to crypto shout out to my top channel members be more 1113 lunar phoenix jamie xrp crypto beginner ken melendez xrp holder 4 xrp life and all others appreciate you guys and i will see you in the next video thanks